first supervisor taught me a lot of lessons about supervision that have stuck with me for many, many years. I was 23 years old. I was working as a lobbyist for the Canadian Bankers Association and I was working on an MBA at night and I just started taking the human resources course. And I'm reading this textbook and I'm thinking, this is stupid. Like, who would do some of the things this book is telling us not to do? It's just so self-evident. There's no way. This is not necessary. Then we got a new boss. And her name was Marianne. And she didn't come from our industry. She came from a different industry. And I think she was feeling a little intimidated because she didn't know our industry. So. Rather than relying on the skills she had and asking a bunch of questions, she didn't want to admit if she didn't know something. So she tried to bluff her way through. Well, bluffing didn't really work very well, so then she tried to avoid meetings. That didn't work very well either. Then she found a guy who worked in our team who was really the one in our team who had the worst people skills, and she appointed him as her second in command and he became the buffer between her and the rest of the staff. And she went and hid in her office, gave him instructions to have us report everything in writing, and a few days later we'd get it back with red marks all over it. This was before we all had uh, laptop computers and email, and she would tell us all the things we had done wrong. People were getting quite demoralized. She also, as part of her fear and insecurity, I guess, Kind of like the uh, great leader to the south of us, she issued an executive order which said none of us were allowed to talk directly to the president. Now we only had about 100 people in the organization at the time, so it was a pretty informal place. So that was quite a change in the way things were done. And it, it caused a lot of tension. And so people all basically started writing their resumes and looking for new jobs. Because this was just not the way we wanted to work. Now, I wasn't allowed to speak to the president anymore, but I was on good terms with his secretary. And honest to God, she did look like that, except she had dark hair. <laughs> we had a really good team, and it seemed an awful pity to break this team up. And so I decided I was going to go talk to her. And I told her what was going on in our unit, and told her that everybody was job hunting. And sure enough, within a few hours, I was invited into the president's office for a chat. Now, Mary Ann's number two guy saw me going, and I tell you, this was a gamble. He tried to stop me, but I said, forget it. I've been asked in to go talk to him. I'm going to go talk to him. And honestly, by that point, I was so pissed off, I didn't care if they fired me. If they did, so be it. So I went in, and I talked to him, and I told him what was going on. By the end of that day, she'd been let go. Now, I'm not telling you this to prove how powerful I was at 23 that I was able to get my boss fired. I'm telling you this because from her, I learned a lot of the traps that supervisors can fall into. And I'm hoping today that we can help you avoid falling into some of those traps.